Well, today, Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel announced his resignation. He leaves behind a rocky tenure in which he struggled to break through the White House's strong team of national security advisors. And I want to bring in our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman, again. And Andrew, this one really came out of left field. Nobody who says they saw this coming is telling the truth. This surprised everybody. Yeah, this was a shocker, Rich. Although he resigned today, Chuck Hagel isn't leaving just yet. He'll stay on the job as Secretary of Defense until a successor can be confirmed. He was the first enlisted veteran to take on the helm of the Department of Defense, hailed as one of the Army's own. But today, Secretary Chuck Hagel announced he is stepping down. It's been the greatest privilege of my life, the greatest privilege of my life to lead and most important, to serve, to serve with the men and women of the Defense Department and support their families. It was just under two years ago that President Obama appointed the former senator from Nebraska, the sole Republican among the president's national security advisors. Chuck Hagel is the leader that our troops deserve. He is an American patriot. At that time, he was lauded for his willingness to work across the aisle. Chuck represents the bipartisan tradition that we need more of in Washington. But as all signs of bipartisanship have eroded in Washington and the threat of ISIS has increased military action in the Middle East, one Hagel associate tells ABC News the fit was no longer right, saying, quote, he took the job to end the war, not start another one. Hagel's alignment with the administration diverged recently. Last month, Hagel criticized National Security Advisor Susan Rice and her policy on Syria, but there was no talk of that today. I consider myself extraordinarily lucky to have had him by my side for two years, and I am grateful. Three names are now being floated as possible replacements, Ash Carter, Rhode Island Senator Jack Reed and a candidate that could make history, Michelle Flournoy, who had become the first female to head the military. Rich? Andrew, thank you. Let's bring in our next guest, Mike Lyons. Mike, a former Army captain who served in Iraq, also military analyst for CBS News Radio and a senior fellow at the Truman National Security Project in Washington. As I said to these guys, surprise for everybody, right? Yeah, I mean, no question. And I'm almost not prepared for it on some level with what's going on. You've got uh, wars. Uh, happening in Afghanistan, in Iraq still. We're putting more troops inside of Iraq. But but very clearly, um, Secretary Hagel has not been on the same page with the president from a strategy perspective, from a communication perspective. And then he stands next to General Dempsey, who's chairman, who seems to be much more in sync with what the president wants to do. So it's just the timing is very uh, suspect, I think. Now, we're getting into the political timing of this, Dominic, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But at the same time, we're seeing we're putting more booths back in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, uh, reportedly, uh, you're closest to me, the root of this was really ISIS, the strategy or lack thereof to deal with ISIS. Um, it's falling on Hegel. But there's been a really a root disagreement. We've seen Panetta write about it. We've seen former Secretary Gates write about it, that the inner circle of the National Security Council of the president, yeah. if you're not in that circle and you're coming from the outside, your voice really isn't taken as seriously as much. And, I mean, for crying out loud, Secretary Kerry, the Secretary of State, is much more prominent now than the Defense Secretary with this stuff. Yeah, he is. And it was unfortunate comments that were leaked by a senior administration official who said you know, he's not the right guy for the job, which is really code for it. doesn't have the intellectual capital for the job. And he was a wartime combat veteran. And really, that guy is, a, is about surrounding himself with other people, good advisors, and on a lot of levels. Um, and he's got to face up, again, up to the president, up to Congress with that regard. Um, he, he sure was up to that task. And so, you know, what, what he was a stumbling nomination process in the very beginning, you know, he's finally got his legs. And now to change courses, I think, will say a lot as to what the president thinks foreign policy looks like, both locally, internationally, and, and especially globally for the next mm. two years. And I want to get back to what lies ahead for the next defense secretary. Hegel might be there for a while. But, guys, tell me this much. The president makes a Big announcement on immigration, um, and politically it was a, you know, a dare to the GOP here. But now he's got to get confirmed a defense secretary. He's got to get confirmed, um, you know, obviously attorney general. A, a attorney general, another undersecretary position that he really wants. I don't see Republicans doing cartwheels over any of the names. Maybe Jack Reed's maybe the only one, Senator Reed, that might get through here. Um, but the timing, the and he has. But, uh, but, Richard, but, but that's why I always said I didn't know if immigration made a lot of sense. You have a new Congress coming in, as you just reflected. And what the president has, has did effectively is put his hand in the mouth of the lion and expect for the lion not to snap. It's not going to happen. As soon as the new Congress comes in, it's payback time. 
No, see, I, see I got the logic of it, Andrew, but I don't get the logic of doing it if you're then going to follow up and fire, by all accounts, your defense secretary and need to get somebody else confirmed while you're making headlines about dealing with Iran, put more troops in Afghanistan. The timing's just really well, curious. Let, let's assume that, that the decision to let Hegel go wasn't connected to the timing or the political machinations, that they just decided that it wasn't working out and they, they wanted don't make to make this a change. Decision no, no, in 24 I, hours. I understand that, but one would like to believe that when issues of national security and foreign policy are, are considered, that the change had to be made or they felt the change had to be made. Made. I think the president is basically daring Republicans, go ahead and stop me. You know, if you want to be seen as blocking my attorney general, as you want to be seen as blocking my defense secretary, you want to block me on immigration, I, I think he's willing to confront them in a way that he hasn't been able to before. He thinks he can win that argument with the American people. It'll be interesting to see whether he can if it goes that far. Well, Mike, prioritize, if you could, what the next man or woman who's going to be the defense, defense secretary is going to have to do in the next two years. Yeah, only Senator Reid, I think, would get through this nomination process. The other two, while frankly, have great qualifications. They've never run a billion-dollar organization with the bureaucracy the size of the Pentagon. That seems to be lost on people right now, and the focus of let's get the first woman in the position. I mean, we've got time to do that. We need someone very highly qualified. If he doesn't think that uh, Secretary Hagel can do ISIS, then we need to get a warfighter into the Pentagon then that's going to change the, the tone and change the way things go. That's kind of really what he's saying here. Uh, neither Mich uh, Michelle Flournoy nor uh, Ash Carter are nowhere near that kind of person. Whoever they put in, Mike, tell me from your vantage point, what are the priorities they got to deal with? Well, so w what went from first a budgetary issue of cutting back the military and some of the spending, which really uh, is falls more onto Congress. I mean, Congress forces the Pentagon to buy things it doesn't want to buy. Uh, downsides in the Army in particular, it, it, according to the President now, the focus has got to be more on war fighting. It's going to be more about pushing troops forward, the strategy. Uh, look, we're losing at some level the, our face in both uh, the Ukraine. Uh, things aren't going well in the Middle East, and now the, the Iran deal is off for another six or seven months, which gives Iran more time to, to continue their, their processes. So um, the, we've got, I just, I'm almost at a loss for words to see until the president nominates and wants to have that job, will we then know what his focus is going to be? I, I think it's interesting how long until we hear a name. You yeah. would think they wouldn't have made the announcement today if they already didn't have somebody lined up. If they don't have somebody lined up here, that tells us there's something more that was going on behind the scenes that yeah. no, none of us know about yet. Rich, the only insider is really Flournoy, but she's been an outcast lately. She's been critical of the administration. She's more of a Hillary person at this point. People are really lining up for that, that next run. Um, and there's really no one on that inner circle in, yep. in the NSC that, frankly, has the talent to both lead the Pentagon and the troops. I think we'll get a name very soon, and the, the administration will try to get it through the lame duck if they possibly can. That'll be the first yeah. challenge to the Republicans in Congress. Mike, thank you so much, as always, Thanks, man. I appreciate please. it. All right. When we uh, come back, everybody, we will head to Ferguson, Missouri, where the grand jury, as I said, has reached a decision surrounding Officer Darren Wilson. Um, uh, we're going to get into that. We'll bring our legal panel in. And also, we're going to hear from the governor of Missouri live in a few minutes as well. Stay with us, everyone.